Thank you, uh, Seoul, and thank you also to all the previous speakers and also to UNESCO RPIA and to the South Korea ICH uh, organizers. Thank you. Uh, before we start, I'd like to play a short video clip which captures the story that I'm about to tell you to do with the building of the traditional Samoan fishing boat and also the fishing for a, a delicacy uh, which is known as the caviar of the Pacific. Uh, thank you, Jusuf. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to thank Denisa Maniaskova from the Czech Republic, who is a film making colleague working here with me to help document the uh, making of the Samoan canoe. I'm going to share with you the screen now that will show you the uh, presentation that I'd like to run through. So the building of this canoe was done in a very short period of time. But before we start looking at that, I'd like to just uh, touch on the context. And on this slide, I, I wanna highlight just one thing, and that's the fact that 81% of the Samoan population, which is around 195,000, live in rural villages which means they don't have a very high employment uh, employability situation because of the fact that this is one of the recently elevated countries to developing status. But for, uh, for most of my lifetime, we've been a least developed country. The oldest site of human occupation dates to around 3000 years ago and we're known as the cradle of Polynesia has a very rich natural and cultural heritage. Unfortunately, with contact with uh, the foreigners, we were first a German protectorate and then a New Zealand protectorate. But then finally, after much struggle and loss of life, the Samoans were able to gain independence as the first Pacific Island nation to do so. With the foreign contact though, there's been considerable change to the way Samoans look at the world and interact with the world through the foreign cultures, mainly European, through Christianity, through the shift to a cash economy, and perhaps most devastating is the change to a foreign diet away from the traditional diet. Quick run through the glossary, a tufunga is an expert craftsman 
who usually is a boat builder and a house construction uh, expert. The Matua Faiva is also another designation, and this is to the person who has the highest expertise. He's also known as the companion of the kings because he's one of the only people who can sit with the king in traditional Samoan society. Va'a is a generic term for all boats, and the pao pao is a particular term for the outrigger canoe, which we will be examining. There were in fact four traditional boats made in Samoa before contact. Unfortunately, all other three boats are no longer made and lot, a lot of the knowledge associated with those uh, boats has been lost. A few years, uh, 1996 actually, the, uh, a group of people who were very interested in Samoa's voyaging past managed to rebuild a Ba'alo, a small outrigger canoe for fishing that had a planked wood construction. And that one is now, I believe, in the museum in Germany. But there's been no other attempt since then, since about 30 odd years ago. So it's very sad that we see the loss of our intangible cultural heritage in this marine culture. The expert that we have been documenting is a 71 year old male from the village of Sanapu on the south coast. It's a very remote rural village. He's a master craftsman and in fact uh, he and I led a team of house builders to, to Japan last year from September to December and we built a traditional faletele or a meeting house at the uh, museum, the Little World Museum of Man in Aichi Prefecture near Inuyama City. The biggest big city next to that is uh, Nagoya. Lisa is known in his village to build at least one new canoe every year. And that uh, sometimes displeases his fellow villagers who don't build the canoes. He built two in October last month, uh, sorry, this month, one just before the Pololo rise and one just after. He's assisted in this work by his adult son, who's 37 years old, and three grandsons, 17, 11, and 10. Now, with an extensive knowledge of the natural envir environment, Lessar very clearly demonstrated that he's more than just expert in his craft of boat building and house building. He's a keeper of indigenous ecological knowledge, and he knows the forest inside out. He refers to the forest as his shop, his store, his warehouse, where he goes to collect the materials he needs. He therefore knows also some rituals that serve to protect that forest in order that he can sustain his work into the future. He's a warden of intangible cultural heritage, comprising knowledge systems and know-how that are not learned in any classroom setting here in Samoa. As an example of his knowledge, he very quickly spouted off to me some 21 species of trees that were used or that he mentioned in connection with the work he undertook. There were eight species for the main body of the boat, four for the boon, one species, which happens to be an invasive species, I need to ask him what the traditional species was, that attached the boon to the booms. And then for the uh, fishing nets, there were two species of tree or shrub that were so supple that they could be bent into a oval and hold the net. With the paddle, he had five species that he could make paddles from, and he chose one for this pr project. For the work, he uses a, an adz, and there was only one species that he says is the preferred species throughout the archipelago. So his tools, including a chainsaw, were an axe, a European style axe, and then the traditional hafted steel adzes. There were two varieties, a straight edge and a curved steel adze that was used on convex surfaces, uh, sorry, on concave surfaces. There you see the much older stone adzes. Now I want to touch briefly on this because this is an example of how 
traditional ecological knowledge and traditional um, intangible cultural heritage has been lost. These stone adzes, and there are literally thousands around the world and many thousands here still in Samoa in the soil. So they were made not long before contact with foreigners began uh, from oceanic basalt. Lesa, along with many other people that I've interviewed and researched the subject on, had no knowledge of how these stone adzes were made or how they were used. Now the one in the photograph, in the lower part of the photograph, that's the biggest ads I've ever seen and handled. It's approximately almost three kilograms in weight, has uh, over a foot long or 310 millimeters, and has a shaped blade of 80 millimeters. Lissa could not tell me how these were used. I want to touch briefly on another aspect of traditional uh, knowledge that's slowly being lost. The two legends associated with the origins of the Palolo both involve war, in one case with the coral and earth creatures, and the other with fish and sea, uh, sorry, fish and birds. In both cases, uh, the fish seem to have lost uh, the war and the worms, uh, sorry, the, in the first case, the earth creatures lost the war and the worms were the Palolo, and they were allowed to rise to the surface twice a year. Seasons of the Samoan calendar are very clearly defined, but knowledge of this is also being lost. The trees that were used for this boat, we have the tamalini, which is in fact an invasive species. And here we saw, and we managed to record the last remaining vestige of the ancient rituals associated with tree felling. Lesar would immediately instruct his grandson to cover the tree stump. And he said, this is to protect the boat from cracking apart. So here we have a little bit more of the construction process and a few photographs to illustrate that. And as I said in the beginning, he, he produced this very, very quickly. Um, created this boat in, in a matter of three days. And the fourth day was just finishing and testing it. We see the grandchildren who are learning from their grandfather. This shows you the boat um, in an illustration that I made from the design that he crafted. And in this slide, you see that in the 1920s, a Maori anthropologist, his boat that he recorded was just one inch shorter. Number of proverbs were collected in this work which you can refer to later. And then to conclude, uh, just a digital video and digital images that have been recorded will be produced into two short films and an educational book. So thank you. To close again, I'd like to just uh, show one more video clip and mention that Samoa is one of nine, uh, 10 Pacific Islands that do not have COVID-19 infections. And there are only about 12 in the world. Thank you. Jessup? Ole, 
我哋挨压先啊！唔系啊，一双啊，佢物件已经有啦，发话话诶，马古唔系其他人，可能佢有肥马古啊，你明唔明？有高处知道咪就买嚟，呀，到佢哋买落嘢多，变发肥发红啊，玻璃面啊，我屋屋里咪落啊，爱发红啊，玻璃啊咧，我哋屋高，讲下伊咪呀，伊哋高伊，我哋高伊哋咩咧？系冇咧，你买，要佢讲开古布浪嚟嘅，伊买狗啊啦，狗嚟过，到佢哋屋企里几多伊咪沙发红啊，玻璃。Kita dia aku ingat ya, wah faham lagi folong salah kau faham angin ya, wah kau kini mai lo ini boleh ni, malu sih yo kau ingat apa saja. Thank you very much for your attention.